Welcome to Titan HST's Business Continuity Today, hosted by Todd DeVoe, where planning beats reality. Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you're at, and uh, well, welcome to a beautiful day today. And I'm Todd DeVoe, and I've been involved in responding to emergencies and disasters since, well, 1989. And in 1999, I started my journey into the field of emergency management while I was working in the EMS in one of the most nations one of those super active counties over there and now i am working at titan hst as the director of emergency management and we're providing communication solutions to everybody who needs them so welcome to business continuity today where we will continue to learn together hey real quick you know this this is going to be a little bit uh, of a different type of show today um you know we've been uh talking about leadership and talking about how to get people prepared for for you know, business wise, um, for disasters and how we can keep our businesses running. And I know we've gotten to the conversation a lot about COVID 19, uh, basically because this is what we're in. And however, you know, we have to be prepared for all sorts of disasters, including, you know, the, the floods and uh, that are happening in, in the Northeast right now, and also the um, stuff that's happening in Louisiana, uh, you know, the fires that are happening in California. So, I mean, we have lots of disasters, but. Uh, 20 years ago, uh, this weekend, or next week, I should say, to where I want to look at it, um, September 11th, we all remember that day and and what that really meant, not just for not just for the nation uh, on the day of the terrorist attack, uh, but for, for everybody that was alive and could remember that day. And I, and I just want to reflect really quickly on, on where I was. And, and I know that those of you that uh, remember that day can reflect exactly where you were. It's one of those things... You know, those, those monumental times in our life where we can almost recall where we're sitting, um, it's just like it's burned into our memory. And I was actually on my way to work um, in downtown Los Angeles, and I worked at the Jefferson Station for uh, doing EMS, and uh, it's you know about, oh, it's like a 30-minute, 40-minute drive from my house, and I used to go really or super early. And when I was on the on-ramp uh, to, the, to the 605, the freeway that I take, uh, the news report I turn on, I listen to talk radio. Yeah, I'm that guy. And the news report was coming in on a plane that hit the World Trade Center. And in my mind, the first thing I was thinking about was, oh, if a plane hit, it's probably like a Cessna or some sort of small craft like that because it's, it's happened in the past. Other, you know, the other skyscrapers have been hit by helicopters um, and by um, airplanes, you know, through the years. Um, I think like the first one was back in the 1930s when they hit. Um, hit the Empire State Building. That was really what I was thinking. And then they were talking, talking about the, the fire that was going on and all those other things. And then as they were interviewing um, one of the, uh, some woman who was on the phone uh, with the newscasters and she just screams, oh, the other, the other building just exploded. She didn't see the plane hit. She just said the other building just exploded. And then the reports came in that it was another plane. And at that point I was like, oh man, I think, I think we're under attack. <laughs> I'm um, not the only one I'm sure had that feeling uh, as well uh, during that time. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because were we prepared uh, for for that attack or for any attack for that matter? You know, are we prepared today? Are we better prepared today? Do people listen more today? You know, and I think about the, the, the younger people that are now working in the workforce, right? My son, he just turned, you know, that just turned, he's going to turn 19 here in December. You know, he, he, doesn't remember that day. Everything he learned from it was in the you know, textbooks or from stories that he's heard from from us, right? Those of us that lived through it. And and you know, are are they prepared? Will they listen? And it kind of goes back to, and I know I, I talk about this guy a lot, uh, Rick Roscola from um, the, who's you know got everybody out of the World Trade Center on his on his floor, uh, basically because he was a thorn in the side of everybody, and and really got people. Um, getting down uh, the stairs uh, during this time. And and I think we need to be that. I think we need to be that thorn. I think we the, those of us in this profession as emergency managers, as business continuity managers, uh, we need to be that thorn. We need to be the person who, who challenges um, the status quo of when we're doing emergency drills and people go, oh, I don't have time or I don't want to or this is a waste of time or whatever their excuse or, or what their... Um, uh, what their problem is with it. We have to really just not take no 
right? We cannot take no for, for an answer when it comes to these. We need to talk to our, you know, executives and our C-suite. If you're not part of the C-suite, you need to talk to the C-suite and get them on board. And I think that was the difference between with Morgan Stanley was their C-suite was on board. Their president of their uh, of the company at that particular location was on board. Now, there's a difference here that the World Trade Center was hit once before in the 90s. And, you know, so it wasn't the first time a terrorist attack was tried on, on the World Trade Center. And so this is why some businesses said, okay, yeah, we need to have a plan. The other thing is, is we need to really break that mold. And it still thinks it's here today of, of waiting for someone to give us the word. You know, and we just discussed this when it comes into wildland fires. You can smell smell the fire you can see the smoke and we're still waiting for a government official to say to evacuate um if you listen to the tapes from paradise you know you hear people calling dispatch saying hey there's a fire is it near us and should we evacuate and so calling for permission to leave um I, you know i think that we shouldn't have to wait for that permission when it comes to safety right and at the end of the day if it ends up being that you evacuate for a small fire or for something that you feel is trivial, you know, just call it a live exercise. You know, you really get to practice that thing. Make it a positive, you know, do a report on that to say, hey, this is what happened. This is what we could do better for next time. Um, and, and make it a live drill if it as it ends up being a big nothing, right? A big nothing burger. You know, now I know there's a there's a fine line between you know doing these things and being called you know a uh, a war war or whatever name you want to put in there or you know uh, the guy who called uh, wolf uh, too many times um so I, I get that there's a, a problem with that but at the end of the day the more practice and the idea of being like a guy like rick or skull being in the bullhorn singing songs getting people out of the room um during practices, uh, I think really makes a big, 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 huge difference. Obviously, we have proof of it um, when the a, a real event uh, uh, does occur. You know, I, this day for me, I mean, I'm from New York originally, um, although be it um, lived in Long Island and upstate, uh, not not necessarily in the city. Um, but I had friends and family that responded to to the World Trade Center on day one, on day zero. Um, of of this event and i had friends that were were on the rubber pile um for a long time you know and sp speaking to them and ha hearing their stories and understanding what everybody went through it, you know it's, it's terrible right and so over the next few weeks after the after the event occurred you know we as americans were the world really was a mix of anger or fear and, and, and sadness you know and I think that we should understand that now, today, we have to re we should reflect on how we felt on, on 9-12, right? And, and what I mean by that is that we see that on 9-12, we pretty much could have got anything that we needed to get, anything we wanted when it came to preparedness and to response. And today we're seeing budgets cut throughout the, you know, work on college campuses, right? I tell the story how a, the president of, of one college uh, said that emergency management was a, was a position that could be cut because it had less friction uh, of being cut. And, and how do we make business continuity and emergency management uh, a piece that's very, 20 years ago, right? 20 years ago, we could have pointed to 9-11 and said, this is why we're important. You know, today, you know, now we're friction. Now it's, we're frictionless to cut this position of, of emergency management. You know, and so we have to really think about what this means and what we can do to to really get in front of of everybody again, so we can prevent deaths, needless deaths that can occur. And you know, I think if everybody and I shouldn't say it this way because there still would it's still a tragedy and people still would have perished. So, but I think if we had more people like Rick Roscola, we probably could have reduce those numbers um, in the World Trade Center, uh, those that could have got out um, to get out and instead of shelter in place, which there was a lot of confusion going on that day, a lot of communication errors that were going on that day. Um, you know, that was the other side of it too, is when this thing event happened, uh, communication, cell, cell coverage went down, communication was hard. Um, there was no backup plan specifically uh, for communications. Uh, for people. And so 
yeah, there was a bunch of different things that occurred on this day that really caused that confusion. And we need, we know this was the case, right? We all know that was the case. So let's take those lessons learned. Although it was 20 years ago, let's take those lessons that we learned from that and really apply them. Because what I think we do poorly and we say, oh, let's take the lessons learned and we don't apply those lessons. We didn't apply the lessons that we learned in Katrina to what happened in uh, Louisiana. Right, we didn't take the lessons learned from Sandy and apply them to what happened in New York. They flooded again and had those issues. Right, there's we didn't take the lessons learned from September 11th necessarily and put them into to practice in your businesses. You know, as we reflect over these next couple of days, this next week, and we're going to see lots of documentaries and memorials for those that are lost. We should take that time to also reflect on how we're doing business. Um, as business continuity managers and emergency managers within our organization to see what we can do better, to see if we can, what plans that we need to put in place and what, what we need to do to practice. You know, we need to do that as well and, and really reflect on, on are we doing the right thing? You know, we talk about our stakeholders and I think today is a time, are we really doing what's best for our colleagues and our stakeholders in our office buildings? Are we doing what's best for our colleagues and our, our stakeholders, you know, throughout the company? You know, it's time to to really take a look at this wholeheartedly and di- dissect it, right? Get deeper into what we're doing. What does our plan really mean? You know, when we talk about planning, is it just a piece of paper that we put on in a binder on a, on a behind our shelves here, right? Or is it really something that we live and use? And, and, and I think that's what we need to be at. I think it's where we need to really reflect. It needs to be something what we live and use on a daily basis to make decisions. We shouldn't be making decisions out of, out of fear. We shouldn't be making decisions off of anxiety, right? We should really use the data that's out there that we can really support on why we do what we do. I think it's important to do this. So over the next few days, let's really sit back and reflect you know, and the idea of never forget, never forget those that died, never forget those first responders that went into the fire, into the building as everybody else was streaming out and never forget the lessons that we learned. Never forget what one man could do like Rick Roscola to be able to really change the culture of an organization and save, you know, around 1200 lives that day. Anyway, everybody, I do appreciate your time with me today. Um, you know, and it's been great. Thank you for, for spending time with business on continue today. Uh, please visit Titan HST for all your communication needs. And remember to follow us on your favorite podcast player, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, and join us next week. And until then, stay safe, stay hydrated.